Hey viewers, uh, project for today is continued work on this Trek 850 mountain bike and um, I replaced the chain and I was looking at the bottom bracket as opposed to being stiff which I, a lot of bottom brackets uh, that are kind of messed up old uh, they tend to be stiff then but this is actually loose so I can go ahead and wiggle the crank so there's a bunch of play in there and that could be because of like worn bearings it could be simply just out of adjustment but it could be damage in there but I'm gonna go ahead open it up clean it out replace the bearings and just make sure everything's okay in there so that's my project for today so first thing I could do is uh, pop off the cranks so got a little dust cover here so I'll pop that off just pry that out with a little screwdriver and oh, a little a little bit of rust in there, no big deal. And I got a 14 millimeter socket here. Go ahead and loosen this guy. And now I've got a uh, crank puller here. And I've got a couple videos on removing cranks, so uh, go ahead and click the link on the screen. I'll take you to one of my videos uh, having to do with uh, removing cranks. <laughs> Bunch of uh, <laughs> dirt and dust in there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy off. Okay, the threads in here uh, where the crank puller will go ahead and engage are kind of messed up a little bit. So I'm going to use a tool to go ahead and chase them. So i got this here. Screw that on, and I got this part here, which will thread on there, and then I can go ahead and thread this in, and this will help clean out the threads because there's just a bunch of junk in there. That way, I can go ahead and screw in the crank puller and not have it strip everything out. <clears throat> Then let's try this again. Ah, screw it in farther. Yay! Okay. Now I go ahead and screw this in. Hold this, tighten this in, and that'll pull the crank arm off like that. Pull the chain off, the, the, the chain ring there, and pull that whole guy off. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull this crank off. So again, pop the dust cap off there. Pull this nut off of here. And these threads look better, so I should be able to just screw this right in. Yeah, this is a lot nicer on this side. There we go. And pull that crate carb off. Now I'll go ahead and remove this lock ring here. Uh, let me see, does it fit in here? Yeah. Eh, like this. And we'll go ahead and loosen this lock ring. Like that, and I can remove this. And then I got like a little uh, pin spanner. There's a Park Tool SPA2, so I fit this in here, and hopefully this will come out. Okay, good. Sometimes these I've, I've run into these where they're frozen in there. And a little bit dirty in there. So I go ahead and pull this out of there. And pull this out of here. And then pull the other bearings out of there. And yeah, they're pretty dirty and 
grimy in there so yeah this would be good to clean this out now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fixed cup and this is I always enjoy doing this because this is uh, usually, one, usually one of the most challenging parts because they're usually just on there very very uh, tight and um, this they're left hand threaded on well, most bikes there are some that are right handed but most of them are left hand threaded and uh, this is left hand threaded so I have a tool here this is a park tool HCW4 and this fits over here like this and I'm guessing this is probably oh it actually came it actually loosened uh, this isn't gonna be as fun as I thought it was gonna be I thought it was gonna be much more challenging than this oh well you can't have everything maybe this is why the uh, whole thing was loose because this was uh, this was loose normally this is just extremely tight And there's the fixed cup, all removed. And I'll have to clean everything out in there. Okay, here's all the parts uh, from the bottom bracket. And I got like a little jar of uh, some paint thinner in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in here and try to get rid of all this old grease. I'm throwing the old bearings in there because I'm gonna take them to the bike shop and have them match them. So I'd rather just not have them all greasy. They get these, they get these parts all cleaned up. Okay, now I need to clean out the bottom bracket shell. So I've got a rag here just with some uh, paint thinner on there. And I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this out and just try to get all the old grease and gunk out of there. It's also a good opportunity to get on the outside of the uh, shell and to kind of clean up a lot of that stuff while you're there and have everything off. And then sometimes I'll take like a wire brush and just kind of brush it around the threads a little bit, kind of get any gunk kind of loosened up out of there. And then wipe it out. Then try to get all the stuff all dried out of there. Okay, I'm ready to start putting this thing back together again. First thing I want to do is take a little bit of grease and I just want to put a little bit of a thin coating of grease just kind of around inside the bottom bracket shell. That'll help keep it from uh, rusting or corroding because moisture will get down there sometimes and this will just kind of help and we'll get a little bit just on these threads here now I want to go ahead and put the uh, the fixed cup back in and before I do that I want to go ahead and put a some uh, grease down around the race of the cup like this for the bearings and then I also want to put just a thin uh, bit of coating uh, of grease around the threads that will help it uh, go on a little smoother and also help it from uh, keep it from seizing on there so much and also it helps keep moisture from coming in that direction okay I have some brand new bearings here and I want to go ahead and pack them with grease. So I'm just go ahead and it's squirt in a little bit of uh, grease between the bearings, like this. If you don't have like a little mini grease gun like this, you just go ahead and just use your finger to kind of push some grease in. Then I'm going to insert the bearings into the uh, the cup here I want to have the cage part uh, facing like uh, out towards the opening of the cup here and then I can go ahead and screw this in and this is going to screw in counterclockwise because it's left hand threaded and you want to be very careful and try to get it started the threading in there don't cross thread it it should go in smoothly 
and there. Now it's going in nice and smoothly because everything's cleaned and greased in there. So I'll just turn it in by hand. It should go in most of the way by hand like this. And then when you can't get it in by hand, go ahead and use the wrench. If you don't have a wrench like this, you can actually use like a crescent wrench against these flat surfaces. It, it just might be a little harder to get it to stay on there like that. And then you want to get this tight. So try to get it as tight as you can. <clears throat> Like that it just <clears throat> there nice and tight okay next we want to go ahead and insert the little plastic liner in there and just kind of push this in this helps keep it uh, stuff that will come down like the seat tube or the you know the down tube there's little holes in there to come in so this will help keep dirt and stuff away from the bearings Now I have the adjustable cup here. I'm going to go ahead and put a line of grease around down in here. Just like I did with the other cup. Just around the race there. And I have the, the, uh, the new bearings. So I'm going to go ahead and just put just a little bit of grease between the bearings on this side. And again, the uh, the bearings go in with the uh, race part, the flat side of the race part facing towards the opening there. And I have the axle, and I'm gonna go ahead and just put just a, a little bit of grease around down in here, just to kind of help keep it from corroding. You know, getting if it gets moisture or anything, I don't want it to rust or anything like that. And I can put just a little bit of a round down in here too. Do not put it on the uh, the flats here, the square taper part. Do not put any grease on there. And now this um, axle, it's not symmetrical. One side is a little bit longer than the other. And I know this part here on this axle, you, you need to make, when you pull the axle out, you want to kind of keep an eye on which side is which. Um, on this, in this case, the little bit longer side here goes over to the drive side. There was like a little ring here and that came out from the drive side. So go ahead and insert the axle in like this. And I also want to put a little bit of grease just around the, uh, the threads of this part here, just so it goes on nice and smoothly. Just a thin coating of grease around down and on there. And then slide this on. And you want to make sure that it goes in nice and smoothly. You don't want to cross thread it. And so it's turning in nice and smoothly. And just turn it in by hand. Now when you can't turn it in by hand anymore, and if it's still a little bit of play on the axle, go ahead and use the, uh, the pin spanner here. It's a good thing. And tighten this in a little bit. You want it, this just is going to take a little bit of uh, time to get adjusted. What you want it is, you want it tight enough that there's no play on the axle, but not so uh, tight that it's going to bind up the bearings. So there's a little, still a little bit of play there, and it's getting tighter to turn this in. Okay, now it's starting to get tight in there. So I'll just back it off a little bit. And just tighten it just a hair. So you want it you want to be able to turn the axle so it turns smoothly, but that there's no play in there. And this could be just very fine tuning it to where you get it, to where there's no play and it's turning smoothly. And that actually feels pretty good there. And I'm not feeling play on there. Okay. 
Now go ahead and take the lock ring and then this is going to go on like that. With the pin spanner, go ahead and hold the center part like that so it doesn't turn and then use the wrench to tighten the lock ring like that. Then double check it. Make sure it feels good. And it feels like there's just a hair of play in there. So I'm just going to back off the lock ring just a little bit. Tighten the center part in just a hair. Just a small fraction. Feel it again. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten the lock ring. Actually, go ahead and grab it like this. And feel it. That feels good. It's turning smoothly and there's no play in there. Okay, now I'm ready to reinstall the cranks. And a little bit of grease got on here, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off. Take the non drive side crank arm, slide that on, start the nut on there. Tighten the nut on here. Now this will press the uh, crank arm onto the square taper spindle. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this nut. And you can use a torque wrench. I usually don't. I usually just tighten it on there pretty good. Like that. Then take the dust cap, slide that back on. Snap it on there. Like that. Okay, before you put the drive side crank arm on, you want to make sure the chain is around the bottom bracket shell like this. Otherwise, it's going to be a real bear to put back on. Um, go ahead and put the, uh, this crank on. And you want to make sure that it, it's 180 degrees from this one. So that one's facing down, this one's facing up. And I've got the nut here. Um, I cleaned it up a little bit. And I'll go ahead and start this on by hand. And take this, tighten it in there, and then with my ratchet wrench, tighten this. Again, you want to kind of, you can use a torque wrench, but you should just tighten it on pretty good. And take the dust cap, snap it back on there. Take the chain, put it back onto the uh, chain ring. And, and all done. So, nice and tight, no, no play in there, or they're, they're turning nice and smoothly. And that is how you replace a, uh, uh, the bearings in a bottom bracket. Hope that helped. I hope you found it interesting. If you found it interesting or useful, please click the like button. I always like getting likes on my videos. Um, and if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. You can click the big subscribe button right down here and subscribe to my channel and you'll see new videos as they come out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped.